right, guys, we're out here. I'm gonna listen for a few turkeys this morning. Um, but I wanted to address something that gets asked a lot of me. Do I really, really need a cutoff switch between the black box and the battery? And this is a this is a controversial topic because here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna put this video out and somebody's gonna say, I ain't had one since I started and I ain't never had a battery problem. I understand that. I've had people, I'm, people are going to tell you that uh, that the unit cuts the black box on and off so you don't need one. Well, here's the way, here's the way it goes. Yes, technically the unit cuts the black box on. But there is always a power source that directly hooks from the black box either to the battery or a cutoff switch, ever how you have it rigged it is always going to be a slight parasitic drain. Now, if you have your battery charger hooked up all the time, you'll never see it. But most people don't do that. I do it. I keep my battery charger plugged up, and if it drops, the battery charger kicks on and so forth. But a lot of folks don't keep their battery chargers hooked up all the time. And you'll go out there, and that battery will be drained down, and you'll wonder how. It's because there is a parasitic, kind of a, I guess it's not technically a parasitic draw, but it is a draw, constant draw from the black box, just maintained. Now, when you turn that unit on, yes, it sends a signal to the black box and it powers it up. But there is always a slight draw from the black box. And so it will drain the battery down. Um, it's just kind of in sleep mode, uh, essentially. You need a... Uh, cutoff switch of some sorts between your black box. Me personally, I have my between my black box and my units. So when you turn it off, none of my units can come on. None of my black box can't come on anything. Um, I recommend um, there's two kinds. There's the simple toggle switch. Um, a lot of people use those. That's a metal toggle switch and get them for three or four bucks. I have found that those do not stand up good to marine environments. They will rust, and then eventually they will cause bad connections. You don't get a good connection. You're not getting all the amps, and I don't know all the technical things on that. I've had a lot of people, you know, I did some power stuff one time, and Lord and mercy, the electricians and people come out of the deal because I didn't use the right terminology. I'm sorry. But it, you're not going to get as much uh, amp uh, flow rate and all that mess. I don't know exactly, but I'm going to tell you, when you get rushed, you get bad connections, and you're not going to get the proper amount of power back to your units. I have found that it's better to use the large Perco switch, and it'll be right there. Use that one. Don't use that one. So use this one, but don't use that one. And because... The, 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 like I said, they, they rust. The Perco switches, they hold up in marine environments a lot better. They're just a better. So, yes, you need a cutoff switch. Yes, I recommend it. Yes, I have one. And now you know the reasons why. Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Ring the bell.